There are loads of great videos, books and blogs that share tips on how to learn human anatomy, but what most of them lack is a proper evidence base for their advice. This is a channel for scientists, so today I took a different approach. I interviewed 15 senior medical students who are currently studying or have completed an intercalated Bachelor's of Science degree in clinical anatomy. These are students who scored very highly in the anatomy exams in their first few years of medical school and beat the competitive selection process to take their studies further. I thought this was the perfect cohort to learn from and ascertain which strategies work best when learning human anatomy and preparing for your anatomy exams. I've worked through their responses and organised the top 10 strategies into a list in order of popularity. My name's Connor, and today we're going to learn what techniques propel the best anatomy students to ace their exams. The first strategy that only one of the students I talked to utilised is to draw the anatomy you're trying to learn directly onto your body. This is based on principles of kinesthetic or doing learning, which has seen a lot of support in the literature. By drawing the structures directly onto yourself, you're not only learning the location and regional anatomy of a structure, but you're also helping to reinforce and solidify your learning by taking it from the textbook and applying it to a new context. Where I've used this technique myself is in learning the anatomy of the hand. Try drawing out the innervation of the ulna, radial and median nerves on your hand and leave it there for an evening. You'll find you're helping to reinforce the anatomy even when you're not directly trying to. The downsides of this technique are that you can't include much information beyond the locations of things, and it only really works for superficial structures like muscles, nerves and sometimes bones. You can get special pens that work great for drawing directly onto your skin, but really you can do this with any at-home marker, just make sure it's not a permanent one. The next strategy is to use mnemonics to help memorise tricky bits of information that don't stick easy. If you watch the videos in this channel, you'll know that we love mnemonics when we feel there's a lot of information being presented. You can use well-known mnemonics like those used for the branches of the facial nerve or the carpal bones in the hand, but even better is to come up with your own mnemonics, as this has been demonstrated to further increase recall and allows you to tailor them to your specific needs. Like with drawing onto yourself, mnemonics can only carry a limited amount of information and don't help with applying the knowledge to clinical scenarios, but they sure can be helpful when the stress of an exam starts to bear down on you. Next is a criminally underrated learning tool that was only used by two of our 15 interviewees. This is mind mapping key subjects. I use this technique all the time when teaching anatomy to younger students, as it allows us to get the key information down in a visual format and gives you something self-derived to take home and revise from. Not only does mind mapping help in memorising key facts and figures through repetition, but it can be tailored in so many ways to your specific learning style. Incorporate diagrams, tables and graphs, link topics together and use different colours to signify different things. Mind mapping is, for me, a top tier revision tool, but clearly wasn't as popular amongst anatomy intercalators. See how it works for you and try using a mind map to summarise your learning the next time you sit down to study anatomy. Next we have a technique that was used by a third of our learners. This is to utilise practice questions everywhere you can. If your university has a bank of past questions or essay examples for their anatomy exams, make sure you go through all of these numerous times and know exactly how you would answer these questions if they came up in an exam setting. But in addition to this, try writing your own practice questions. If you're feeling particularly tired or lazy one day and don't feel like sitting down for a big revision session, just take 20 minutes and make a list of five questions that you feel might come up in your exam. For example, if your anatomy exam is essay-based, write out a clinical scenario with a bit of anatomy context and give yourself a series of sub-questions to answer on the topic. Then when you sit down to revise again tomorrow, you've got somewhere to start. You can bullet point your response to the question or even write it out in prose. But however you do it, if any of that content comes up in the exams later, you'll be thanking yourself you had an answer drafted out when you look around and see the other students scratching their heads. Next, many of our interviewees said they formed small work groups with other students at the same level and worked with these to help learn their anatomy. This could be in the form of group discussion to cover a topic, to mind mapping out your thoughts on something, or even delivering a small teaching session to one another on topics you're particularly confident on. It's well-worn advice that you remember most of what you teach to others, and there's a wealth of evidence to support this. Remember that this strategy may take more time than the others, and it requires you to have a dedicated group of like-minded friends, but I absolutely think it's one of the best ways of upping your anatomy knowledge. Now we're getting into the big leagues. Nearly half of our cohort said they relied on learning the clinical correlations of something as a way to solidify their anatomical knowledge. This may help because your exam specifically asks questions in a clinical format, but please remember this tactic even if that's not the case. In medical education, this tactic is based on the principles of constructive alignment, which was first devised by Professor John Biggs. 
By taking our basic knowledge of human anatomy and extrapolating it to understand a clinical scenario, such as a fractured neck of femur, extrageral hematoma or appendicitis, you reinforce your learning and commit it to your long-term memory more fully. You'll also start to develop a background of clinical knowledge that will be invaluable as you continue down your path towards becoming a healthcare professional. Over half of our anatomy interclators said that looking at and learning from real perception models or images was invaluable in their study of anatomy. Specific sources such as McMinn's Clinical Atlas of Human Anatomy or the Ackland's Anatomy video series have been cited over and over again, but wherever you can get access to real images, make sure you take the chance to utilise them. In reality, anatomy isn't neatly outlined and coloured in as you'll find it in the textbooks. This might not become apparent until clinical life, but for some of you you'll have exams specifically based on the prosection models at your university. Making sure you take the time to see what real human anatomy looks like in a pre-dissected model is absolutely essential if you plan on passing your exams. 8 out of our 15 anatomy students said that using 3D anatomy revision software played a role in their learning. I expect this is a technique that's seeing rapid rise as students are instructed to work from home and have less access to 3D models and cadavers but there's certainly a good reason to use it. Using tools like Complete Anatomy or Essential Anatomy, which are apps you can download on your phone, you can rotate and slice real human models, highlight structures, see additional information, follow the paths of nerves and arteries, see the insertion of muscles, and much, much more. Getting a 3D visualization of anatomy is very important before you go into clinical medicine, and even for your exams it helps you appreciate the structural relationships of certain body parts to one another and truly helps visualise the anatomy of the body in regions as opposed to systems as it's often seen in textbooks. It can be a bit daunting when you open up one of these apps for the first time, so make sure you go in with a battle plan and know what you're going to be looking at. Have your favourite textbook or website close at hand and see if you can match what you find in the book to the real thing on the model you've got in front of you. Now for the penultimate. The second most popular learning tool used by anatomy integrators was to draw, draw and draw. 60% of our interviewees said they relied on drawing out the anatomy as a way of helping remember it. Anatomy is obviously an intensely visual subject, far more so than physiology, microbiology or any other field of medicine. And the only way to do this justice is to try and turn what you learn into a picture and label everything you can. Now you might not be an artist, but that doesn't matter. Any simple drawings will help you learn the relationship of structures to one another and they'll give you something to fall back on when you're having a slow day and don't feel like reading any more of the textbook. Furthermore, if your exam is essay-based, you can usually pick up loads of marks simply by drawing out a picture of what you're trying to describe and annotating it fully. It can save you loads of time and shows the examiner that you understand the relationship of different structures to one another and not just what the textbook is telling you. Now, before we get to the most used technique, there are some honourable mentions I'd like to cover first. These are some tips that didn't quite fit into the theme of the video, but I think they're still worth covering in case you find them useful. A good proportion of our interviewees specifically gave advice to start small and build up when you're learning anatomy. If you break things down into manageable chunks and start with the basics, you'll be able to build upon this over a period of time and grow your knowledge in a way that is more approachable. A few students said they found YouTube videos and websites as a good way to learn or recap anatomy. Some examples of popular channels and websites are on the screen right now, but pick one you like and binge their content while you're feeling unfocused or tired. Sometimes you just need someone to talk at you for a while, and YouTube has a wealth of content to keep you ticking over. Finally, one student said they even found watching medical TV shows was a good way to keep their brain thinking about anatomy. You might find yourself rolling your eyes if someone gets a basic topic wrong on TV, or over explains something that you know is rather simple. But watching medical shows like Grey's Anatomy, House or Surgeons at the Edge of Life can help you keep thinking about anatomy even in your downtime. Okay, so finally we have the most popular learning technique as recommended by our group of anatomy integrators. 10 out of 15 students said they used flashcards and space repetition as a mainstay of their anatomy revision. Space repetition, or space training, is a method of learning where you first learn a topic, then revisit it after a short time period, then a longer time period, then longer still. Each time you revisit this piece of information, you'll find you retain it at a higher level for longer before it leaves your memory. Eventually you'll find you have no trouble remembering the subject matter at all and can safely say it's been committed to your long-term memory. This style of learning has been compared to mast learning or cramming in a number of high-power studies and has frequently come out on top. You can approach spaced repetition however you like, but for me the absolute best way to do it is using flashcards. There are a number of pre-made anatomy flashcards like those from Gray's or Netter's and these can form a great starting point if you're stuck for how to begin. But as with all learning, the best way to memorise something is for you to create it yourself. I use an app called Anki, 
which you can download on your phone or laptop, in which you can create your own flashcards or download those made by somebody else. You get given a certain number of flashcards to complete each day depending on your preferences. And as you click through them, you can be prompted with a question before being given the answer. But the best part about Anki is that it automatically sets up the space repetition aspect for you. If you found the topic easy, tell the app and it won't give it you again for a few days. If you found it hard, it'll be put to the top of the pile for tomorrow's revision. After a period of time, the easy questions will become less and less frequent as you commit them to your long-term memory. Now, this style of learning requires you to start weeks to months before your anatomy exams and isn't going to help you much in the short term, but it's absolutely one of the best tactics you can use to make revision more manageable and get the edge on your competition. And there you go, those are the top 10 techniques that our anatomy students found useful when preparing for their preclinical exams. I hope you found something useful here, but remember that the best student will use a combination of techniques to give their brain the maximum number of information streams to learn from. I've put a link to the Google form in the description box below and would love it if you could fill out some of the techniques you use when learning anatomy. If we get enough responses, I'll make a follow-up video with a larger data set to look at. See you soon, anatomists, and I hope you have a great day.